Hey everybody, out there in the YouTube land, this is a review of the, what year is this we're in? I would say this is a 2012, even though we're actually in 2013. Uh, 2012 SG Standard Limited. Now, what limited means is that it's either going to be highly collectible or not worth anything. Go figure. That's the, uh, the nature of the beast. There are a couple of different things about this guitar that I wanted to talk about. Now, first of all, first of all, you know, you, you turn into a review of an SG, and you're expecting we're going to go. We're not going to do that. Or. We're not going to do that. You might even be expecting. Gonna do that either. What's 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 another good one we could be expecting? Um, oh yeah, here's here's one you might be expecting. Or so anyway, I don't even know how that sounds there. My amp is way back there. And one of the things that I don't like about guitar reviews, I understand people go through clean, they go through this, sounds like this, sounds like that, but then they tell you their rig. Like, I've got a little Marshall 30 watt back there. It's nothing fantastic. And the reason I have such a small amp and don't have money into all this stuff is because I'm never going anywhere with music. So as long as this room is filled up with my noise, then I'm good to go. Uh, so when someone says, I'm playing through this tube, that, and this thing on this switch, and this pony dog foot pedal from Bite Master, it's like, I don't have any of that, so it's not going to sound like that at my house, all right? So you need to go to the store, or, you know, Guitar Center, I got this from Guitar Center, which I don't normally do business with for bigger purchases because I like my local businesses but this one was calling to me I couldn't find it anywhere else so I got it I got it new from Guitar Center and uh, I think it was a sale and uh, and I had a hundred dollar gift card so it was really a, a, a steal um, so some features that I want to talk about I don't, I'm not gonna sit here and play this guitar for five minutes because when you get take it home or you just play it at the store you're gonna be playing it your way and I can't, I can't duplicate that or present that to you. So, some of the, the things that make this guitar different, it is an SG standard, but it's SG standard limited. It's its own SG. And what I mean by that is very much like um, the SG Classic is its own SG. It's, it is a standard model now. I think it was originally limited edition, but now they're, I think they're still making them. Then you have the SG Standard P90. Yeah, it's an SG standard, but it's its own SG. You have the SG Standard, which I think uh, this year is 57 Classic Humbuckers. I think that's what's what's in them this year. Uh, and then you have the old SG Standards, which are the 490R uh, and the 498T, I'm pretty sure, which is what is in this. So this is, you know, a, a, a tip of your hat to um, the older SG Standards, if I'm not mistaken. 490 R 498T. These pickups, they're a solid. I love them. They're uh, they're very bitey. They're not maybe as growly as the 57s, uh, but they're very tight and you know they they pack a, a good punch and they're a sound that I like. Which you know maybe you don't. Maybe you like the 57 classics. And if you do, screw you. Stop right now and go watch a review on something else. Okay. All right. Get off my back about it. So you have first of all nitrocellulose finish, which um, I want to tell you something right now. If you have anything with nitrocellulose finish, a buddy of mine told me this at work when I just got this guitar. He said, make sure it doesn't touch any plastic. Like if you have a guitar stand with just a little plastic tube for cushioning, my hooks that I hang my guitars on are plastic. Uh, so sure enough, I came home. Well, you know, they're plastic coated. They're not like plastic hooks or like Legos or anything. So I come home and I grab it, and sure enough, right up here, how do I get this in the camera? Which you probably can't see unless you like have a TV as big as your wall. A TV. A computer monitor. Well, it could be on your TV. Who knows? Uh, there's a little 
fade. There's no gloss anymore. There's a little where there was contact between the plastic and the finish of my guitar. So I cut up a little piece of cloth and I wrapped it around the hook so that, that's my special hook for my special guitar with its nitrocellulose finish. And this color is um, vintage wine, wine, midnight wine, heritage wine, heritage cheap wine, Merlot. I have no idea what this color is called. And you probably can't even see it. It's almost brown, uh, but it's real subtle. It's real subtly red, which I like. Most of my guitars are red. I like red guitars. And uh, this is a nice little change. It's almost like a purple, brown, red. I like it a lot. Okay, so some of the differences from the SG standard. One is going to be the pickups, as we mentioned. And then two, you have a fat neck. This is not the slim tapered neck that everyone is used to on an SG standard. I for one like it. I saw in uh, some of the blogs before I purchased it that uh, you know it's it's too big for an SG. It makes the guitar feel bulky when an SG is supposed to feel really slim. I kinda like it because I don't feel like I'm gonna break it. I know the um, you know the, the slim taper neck is designed for that so you can get around really fast and I, that feels really comfortable in my hand too but this has a like a beefier feel like this is a man's neck and real men who play SG's they play a big old fat neck like this like a 2 by 4 with a bevel on it <laughs> it's not if you can play a strat it's, it's it feels to me like a strat like a strat neck you know except for it doesn't have that little goofy curly cue thing it's got nice Gibson mother of pearl oh yeah look at that look at that all right um no, no offense to the Strat people I dropped my pick now what do I do how am I supposed to complete my review without a pick I can't play any more ACDC on my SG we've got more don't worry about it um so you have that the neck is a little fatter it's something that might throw you off if you're an SG guy I'm an SG guy and then and first you grab it and you're kind of like I don't know, it seems kind of chunky. But uh, you give it a little time, and I think you're going to find that you really, really like that that thick neck. It feels meaty, and especially when you're when you're rocking out, it just it, it feels good. It does feel good, and it doesn't feel like you're going to break it. For me, those slim taper necks, I love them, but they just they feel kind of flimsy. I know they're not, but they feel that way. Um, so you have that. It's a, it's good. That's going to be a personal choice. You like it or you don't. The other thing that's interesting, people just do that in the middle of guitar reviews, so I thought I'd you know continue the tradition of just playing randomly. You know, it's got a real... You hear that kind of... And then it goes... And then you feel that... <laughs> uh, the other thing that we have that's unique is a baked... Maple fretboard. This is not, is not, I repeat, is not rosewood. It's baked maple, which of course you can see on the specs, and it's another thing you got to kind of feel to, to either believe or disbelieve. To me, it feels like I have another SG. Uh, it's a special with the crescent moon inlays. I'm sure you guys have seen that. They came out early 2000s, I think. And those are ebony, ebony fretboard, and I love it. I love an ebony fretboard. This is very, very similar to the feel and the sound of ebony. Uh, it's like a little bitier, a little tighter. I don't know. It's, it's, it's hard to put sound into words sometimes. But it's a different feel altogether. And when you get up close, which you can't see when I do this, there's nothing you can see. Everything just gets blurry. That's not helping you at all. This is like almost no grain. It's weird. Like ebony has just like a sheet of black. This is like a sheet of brown. Um... It's you know it's very tight grained you know with rosewood you see all those pock marks from the grain on some people love that I, I I don't love it rosewood's just the standby so it's it's always there it's not uh, like I don't really have a preference I I could I'd like to avoid those little pock marks if I, if I could but some people like them they think it gives the wood or it gives the guitar you know a character and it's a different sound it is a different sound every wood is going to make a different sound if they made this guitar out of yellow pine. It wouldn't sound the same regardless of what the pickups were. So every every little bit makes its own sound. So you combine 
The nitrocellulose finish, which does affect the sound, I don't care what anybody says, everything about a guitar affects the sound. Uh, so you have the nitrocellulose finish, and then you have the fatter neck, and then you have this baked maple fretboard, which I really, really like. I was a little leery. You know, Guitar Center gives you that 30 days to turn it in. So if I didn't like it, you know, I didn't play it in the store. This is a, probably the first guitar I've ever bought. I just pulled the trigger on because I liked the look and the specs and the, the overall reviews of it. Uh, plus, I thought it was kind of neat that there was so much controversy and it was either it was a love-hate thing. I'm on the love side. For this guitar especially for the price I think it was on sale and I had a gift card I think I paid out of pocket 800 bucks so if you can get any Gibson any high-end Gibson standard anything for 800 bucks you're doing pretty good let alone new uh, and a limited run the maple oh there I go again Let's see how fast you can play the pentatonic minor scale, because I'm so skilled. Here's here's a scale really fast. That'll make that'll make me seem talented. Um, so <laughs> where was it? The maple. Uh, a lot of speculation about it. A lot of um, talk about how there's something going on with the rosewood, and I didn't get all the details, so I'm not going to say on here that I know what's going on with the rosewood and the ebony from India or wherever they're getting it from or what Gibson they lost some or they didn't lose some I don't know I don't know the story so I'm not going to tell you look it up online you're online right now go look it up um, it's like it's a it's a baking process and a moisturizing process that stabilizes the wood incredibly so it's not just like they cut it they milled a piece of maple and they put it on here I mean this maple that's on here this is like is built to last you know and this piece of maple is consistent with the next fretboard that was cut out of that board and the next fretboard it, it makes it a very consistent wood which is good um, I, I like it it's one of those things again you're just gonna have to feel it play it there's a lot of spec where Gibson's getting away from their roots and they're trying this new stuff because it cuts costs but they're charging the same for the guitar and and maple's going to be this new thing. We won't be able to get rosewood anymore because all the environmentalists and the liberals and the saving owl and all this. Whoa, everybody just settle down. You can still get rosewood. This, is, I think, is a great alternative. For one, they're going greener. Green-ish. I mean, as green as you can be for a company that just whacks down trees and makes instruments for punk kids. As green as you can be. Um... It's, I think it's a step in a, in a great direction where you can... I, I'm not a green freak. I'm not a green freak. But if you can get something that's really, really similar to ebony and it's, it's you know, more... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's more manageable from more manageable forests. I say go for it. You know, as, stain it if you don't like it. Stain it black. You're going to have the same sound. Uh... And rosewood, rosewood has never really been for me. It's just always been on the guitars. The baked maple thing, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of it, not only from Gibson, uh, but probably from Fender. Fender's probably going to get on the train with that. One, because it's cheaper, and both of those companies do have a wonderful habit of passing their savings on to the customer. And uh, it's, it's also a new tone. It's a new sound that, you know, Pete Townsend didn't have a baked maple fretboard. Angus Young didn't have a, a baked maple fretboard. I mean, this is, it's a new thing. It's a new sound. And I say give it a shot. You know what I mean? So everybody just shut up and get some, get a maple, baked maple fretboard. And you'll be happy with it. Gosh darn it. Of course, some people who watch this are going to be like, what are such and such. But, and they would be right. So those are really what you have going on. You got the baked maple fretboard. I say A+. Plus. That's that's one controversy. That's one thing that people are arguing about. Yay or nay? I say yay. A big yay. Um, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more. So it's like anything else. You might as well get used to it. You know, get used to your 350 uh, a gallon gas because here it is. Whether you like it or not. And then uh, you have the fatter neck and the 490, 490 and the 498 pickups. All in all, 
is a fantastic guitar at a steal of a price. Potential for collectors, for collectability. We know how these things go. Maybe, maybe not. SGs. Gibson has been bombarding us with SGs. There's a 50s tribute and a 60s tribute and a 70s tribute and there's a future tribute or something. And I was like, why don't they ever make guitars for the year that they're in? They're always making guitars from previous years, reissues of previous years. So you never, like, you'll never see the actual 2013 SG standard. In 20 years, you'll see a reissue of that guitar. And that will be the guitar. I don't understand. They're, they're bombarding us with SGs. And this one is a winner. The fit and the finish. The setup was a little twisted. I had to set it up myself, and I'm not too fond of the tuners. The regular Gibson Deluxe tuners. These particular ones, they're different snot colored ones than the other ones that I have that are you know different snot color one. And the darker snot color ones have been fine for years. These new lighter snot colored ones, they just don't seem to be working. They're just not holding. Go figure. You can always get new tuners. Okay, sum it all up. It's a great guitar. If you can get one, get one. And if you don't like it, return it. It's not a big deal. Don't go on a blog and be hating because, uh, and be hating. Listen to me. Don't go on a blog and, and, and start, uh, you know, ramming Gibson a new one because they're trying something new. You don't have to buy it. And then if people don't buy it, then they won't sell it anymore. That's just the way it goes. Now I just got to figure out how to play it well. Get yourself a Gibson SG Standard Limited if you can. Or if you don't want one, don't get one. I don't know what to tell you, but I hope this review was helpful to you. Uh, when you play it, again, it's going to play however you play it on whatever settings you have. So I'm not going to spend all this time going through a bunch of different stuff as far as the sounds go. It feels good. It plays good. It's a great quality instrument, and it's at a steal of a price. Even at list, I think. or not. Well, maybe not at list, but at, at the off-sale price, I think was like a 1000 Great. Great guitar. Great value. And you'll, I think you'll be very, very happy. So I hope this review was helpful. Thanks for watching. And uh, take care. God bless America. And keep... Rock. I don't have a thing. I gotta come up with a thing if I'm gonna keep doing guitar reviews. It's my first one. Give me a break, alright? Jeez.